Cancerian friends and welcome to your horoscope for October of 2020. We're Cancer this month. I think it's a little bit of a movable month and it is a month where I would tell you Cancer if you can take it a little bit easy this month which does not mean go hide under a rock, don't pull into the shell or anything like that but we do have three moons this month. At the end of the month the uh, last moon that we have in conjunction with Uranus and is also a super moon so it's kind of a lot of intensity that comes but still like I said nothing to be fearful of but I do think because you are ruled by the moon we want to be mindful when the moon has got a lot going on at any given time as well Mercury is going to go retrograde in a water sign this month and then move back into the energy of Libra into that air energy so it is definitely a movable month I don't think that this is the month where everything just goes flying forward or anything like that but there's certainly progress to be made especially because some of the retrograde energy continues to come down as we welcome Pluto out of retrograde which will mean we've got that Capricorn Council out of retrograde so even worlds or things in the outside world can start to move forward for us which gives that sense of relief a little bit as well now because we do have this moon business going on I do think that this month could be or at least feel a little bit um stressful but navigate well use your astrology well it can't just be cancer hide all the time you know it can't always be stress and all of this other stuff we just have to acknowledge that this month does have a fair amount of watery movement available for it okay but let's jump in here and see about how we can take advantage of that first things first though we have got the eat and greets coming up this month and what a lineup we've got i'm so pumped to bring everybody here for you um we've got basil farrington shane m nine guard is going to be coming we've got sarah d haven julio pellegrino is going to be here and Jessica Lignato. The list just goes on, so make sure that you check it out. And if you would like to experience the Eat and Breeds ad free, come on over and join me. Become a patron on my Patreon. I've made that jump and I will continue to grow the Patreon, but right now the Eat and Breeds are in there and you don't have to fuss with all these 22 ads in 10 minutes and all of that business. So come over and enjoy it. If you're not ready to be a patron, that is totally okay as well. The videos will still be right here for you and you can still listen to them on the podcast as well. As well, this month, I'll be traveling over to hang out with Achu Tabatha and hang out with Astrology University on their panel for the um, Summit of Astrology and World Events. You can get registered for that in the description box down below and for the Achutababa Nightlife Speaker Series. They're both happening um, October 3rd and 4th and then October 17th. So get registered in the description box down below, okay? All right, Cancer, as we jump into this month, we come straight in with a full moon in the energy of Aries at nine degrees. Now, this is going to light up the tip top part of your chart. A full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we're definitely going to take a shift here. Now, I think about the fact that the top of your chart ruled by Aries is also got its ruling planet in retrograde. So one of the things that comes to mind for me is truly that you may be re-looking over the career or you may be looking over what we call you or how we know you in the world almost as if you're reassessing if this is where the desire is still at now some things could have been happening as well since mars has been in retrograde where it's almost like water building behind the dam you know so some built up pent up frustrations that are going on so maybe there is something that feels or like pressure or a little bit of conflict that comes up at work but you know I firmly believe that sometimes you have to have a breakdown before you have a breakthrough so maybe it's a conversation you know whether it's at work or in, even if that work for you is I stay at home you know what is the conversation that something needs to maybe be popping out and have an adjustment to it you could definitely say, see that happening here at this full moon I can always tell when I record in front of a mercury retrograde so excuse the flubs however when we get to the second of the month we see venus moving into the energy of virgo lighting up your third house space now i love this energy for you this month because venus and virgo is first of all easy with the communication the third house is communication decision making our thinking things with siblings contracts any of these kinds of things where we write you do that website the writing that goes on the website lives here in the third house so it's very much so a mental communication kind of place but as venus comes here she brings a diplomacy to your table that is unlike when she's in other places because 
Virgo can be very picky, very nitpicky, very meticulous at its lower level where it's almost like the criticism is too much. But when Venus comes here, she softens and says, let's give a little bit of grace. Yes, let's find the details. Let's have the discernment. Let's write something that is brilliant, magnetic. Let's communicate in ways that are brilliant and magnetic, but not too critical. You know, so it's a beautiful energy as Venus travels here until we leave this month. On the 4th, we'll see Pluto coming out of retrograde. Now, Pluto, as he's been retrograde, has been working on tearing down things in your relationship, destructing them, ideas, taking them out of your life if they're not healthy, getting a different vision around what ideas can be, secrets, fears that you've had in relationships, even the fear of really being successful in a relationship. As Pluto comes out of retrograde, he's like, here you go. I've worked with you. We've transformed this area together. I've invited you to that party. Now you get to show up and take a leap forward with these dreams, with these desires, your deepest desires, the ambitions that you have in relationships, but in a way that is transformed. Or the other thing that it can feel like is now that some changes have been made, some things have been cleared out, you see how to transform this area of your life. And that's conscious chosen relationships that's also battles divorces your open enemies open conflict as pluto comes direct here it's going to be forward motion venus is helping you be magnetic over here be discerning what's the priority so that you can make your way forward in these particular areas i actually love this combination of energies at the beginning of the month because whatever's going on in the career, whatever's going on in the relationship, Venus is really suiting up. Pluto is suiting up and showing up to help you here. So forward progress is on the way. On the 13th, we have Mercury, who's in the energy of Scorpio, going to go retrograde at 12 degrees, and then it will back up at the end of the month into the energy of Libra. But on the 13th, we see Mercury taking the retrograde in the energy of Scorpio. So this is your fifth house. Okay. Mercury retrograde. First of all, standard rules apply. You know, you don't want to sign those big contracts during a Mercury retrograde, or if you do, that's okay. You don't fall off the planet because you signed a contract or made a big decision. You just need to understand that there will likely be some adjustment that comes with it down the road. And if you're prepared for that, then do you. In the energy of Scorpio, <clears throat> It's not the same as Virgo where it gets meticulous and gets into the details. Scorpio more so wants to take what you have in this area, crack it open, and really inspect why and how it works. So you may be doing some, some deep looking in your fifth house at things with your children, your ideas around children, your ideas around your hobbies, around joy, around play, around where you're willing to take a risk, or maybe where you've been holding yourself back too much to take a risk. So I think that this is an absolutely brilliant energy for you to be interacting with as we come into this retrograde, because you're going to look here and say what needs to be transformed where do i need to get a little bit deeper into this particular retrograde and see what's living down here see what's in my mind that is maybe um, i can go deeper with that okay on the 16th, we've got a new moon happening at 24 degrees of Libra. So this is going to light up the fourth house space for you. So home, family, real estate, property, your foundations. You know, as things have been retrograde, as 2020 has gone on cancer, we have all been changed. You have been changed. Our ideas, our ideals are shifting the way that we are looking forward to really showing up in the world as, as we're allowed to come out and play is shifting. Um, so as this new moon is here in Libra and you're planting your seeds of intention for what you'd like to begin here. Remember when we plant in the dark, I don't need to tell you anything about the moon, but let me tell you anyway. When we plant in the dark, it, that's it. It's dark. We don't know. We say, I would like the balance of this in my life, Libra. I would like to nurture my relationships at home in this way. But you do it in the dark and trust your intuition that what you're asking for is what's trying to come along to you and what's going to blossom out over this next four weeks. Remember what we started the new moon for good or for ill. We will spend the next four weeks or the next bigger lunar cycle with that. And sometimes that can look like, you know, when do we get this placement back? Is this, um, is this a couple years? Is this, you know, what does it look like? So just remember a new moon energy for good or for ill. What we plant here is what we're going to work on and what we're going to experience in the lessons of our home. Okay. 
On the 22nd, we see the sun now moving up by Mercury into the energy of Scorpio. So the fifth house, I'm motivated now. Light, heat, life, vitality. There's movement. There is a willingness to go. The sun is also the ruler in the general of your second house where Leo lives. So the sun being here in Scorpio, one of the thoughts that I had is maybe even around your finances or around a hobby or around something that you're willing to take a risk on or maybe you're trying to make a fresh start with. Um, like a new business or YouTube channel or, you know, think things like that. There is some element, I think, of your finances that has to be decluttered or detoxed in order to allow the sun to really, really shine over there. And some of this, too, I wonder, Cancer, is this for somebody? Is this like, did you have some ideas around whether you wanted children or you didn't want children? And now some of that is being rearranged or you didn't want children and now somebody's pregnant. I mean, what does that look like? Because there's that element of a change or a shift to the perspective and a shift to the body that seems to be on the table. So if that's you, let me know in the comment section. On the 24th, we actually have Venus trine Saturn. And I wanted to put this in here because this is a great day. This is a great energy to make a commitment and have it be long lasting. So where's Venus? Where's Saturn in your chart? Look at these two areas because if you're making decisions that have things to do with those two housing areas, whatever you make as a long-term commitment here can actually be very, very good. On the 27th, we see that Mercury retrograde now scooping back into the energy of Libra. So now this is going to give you that review of the fourth house, the foundation, your inner psychological needs, what makes you secure, make, what makes you feel satisfied, what makes you feel soul fed. This could also be in the retrograde of Scorpio. Maybe you're going back to something with a family member. Um, you're going back over Venus. I mean, you know, Venus, the ruling energy of Libra is right now in the energy of Virgo. So maybe you're going through the details of something in your home or your domestic life or with your family or something like that. But this retrograde will definitely help you rebalance this area, be very diplomatic, but also see where maybe a partnership can be formed or you can review that partnership in this area. Now, as we close this month, Cancer, we're going to close with a full moon in the energy of Taurus right there, conjunct Uranus. This lights up your 11th house space. So friends, groupings, associations, where you want to be seen, where you want to be known. But most importantly, I think long range plans, goals, and designs that you have for yourself. This is a quite innovative house. The ruler of this house traditionally is retrograde, is coming against this moon where Uranus is in Taurus. So this is a surprise. This is a shakeup and it doesn't always have to be bad. But in your long range goals, plans, and designs, what is the retrograde season shown you? that you will make some adjustments to what that long range plan goal and design was, right? Because things have shifted, they have changed. And is this calling for you here to end, acknowledge, or adjust a vision? For some of you too, this will just flat out be, I've had friends or I've had this connection for a very long time and I'm just ready to put it down. It could be just that easy, that simple for you, or you're adjusting how you show up in your social medias because that is perfectly, uh, that is perfectly reasonable with this energy as well, okay? So I think it's going to be a good month, Cancer. I think it is a moony month. And because it's a moony month, I want you to be mindful, especially if you are a Cancer who also has high water in your chart, in your active element, to watch yourself. Give yourself some grace this month. Make sure that you are getting downtime. You're hydrating. You're resting. You're taking care of yourself. And when you don't have to, you're not putting the ultimate push on things in your life because it is a very Cancerian quality to think if I just control this, if I just get this going, then I can relax and be vulnerable. Not the way it's going to work this month, I don't think at all. So give yourself some grace, give yourself some tacos and some love and some water this month. And I look forward to seeing you in the eat and greets, in the summits, in the speaking series, and just connecting with you every week right here on this channel. All right, Cancers, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you a ton. And I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye.